Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of this little demonstration this afternoon or this morning is to uh, teach you some of the technique aspect of porcelain jacket. And the thing we wanted to go through is the teaching of the adaptation of the platinum foil matrix. However, uh, we're going to use tin foil rather than platinum foil. Uh, for those of you who may have an interest uh, in going further than that, this is a nice little kit that is made up by the supply stores. It gives you every instrument that uh, you would need to uh, do anything in the fabrication of the uh, porcelain jacket. Uh, the only thing you'd need in addition to this, of course, is the uh, porcelain furnace and porcelain powder. I'll set this aside now and we'll get on with our part. You all should have gotten a little model like this, uh, which has a removable die in it which is uh, a low fusing metal die, and uh, therefore they're not quite as nice as they should be because uh, they've been uh, duplicated many times and they're a little rough. But however, for our purpose, it will uh, show you, uh, give you the opportunity to uh, do what we want and uh, learn to burnish a, a matrix uh, on the die. As I stated, we're, we are going to use uh, tin foil, but uh, just to review quickly here, uh, you can buy the platinum foil in this manner. A one penny weight is a one thousand thickness. And uh, along with that comes the card to help you cut it to the proper size. And we would use approximately three quarters of an inch uh, on each side of the diamond, uh, a diamond shaped piece of uh, foil. Now it also comes in a little envelope like this that uh, you can just cut through the envelope and that would also give you the same type of thing. Uh, I've pre-cut a piece to show you here, and I think maybe if we get it in close in my hand, we can see the size of the uh, foil. And this is what you'll be working with, uh, about three-quarters inch on each side. I think it's just a little blurred, but I think there we go. And so that will uh, give you an idea of what uh, we're going to be working with. Now, you need your number seven spatula. Uh, you need a pair of straight scissors. We don't use the curved scissors because the curvature uh, damages the foil too much and makes it hard to use. So then you would use your scissors to cut out a piece of uh, tin foil that uh, you have. I think you have foil. If not, we'll supply you with some. Now I'm going to go through this technique, and uh, we'll go slowly here and see if we can't uh, uh, point out at least the important parts. The other thing you will need is a small pair of pliers. You can use your cotton plier. Uh, this is a, a platinum plier, which is a little more convenient to use because the points are smaller. But if you use the cotton plier, it suffices very well. We would pick up our piece of foil, and I'll try and show you each step as we go so you catch it in here. And we take and put the piece of foil. Now, this is where we may have to do a little and stop. And we would press it against the labial portion, the labial portion of the die. And as you do that, Catch a little piece of the foil uh, over the bottom so that you can hold it. Otherwise, it slips, and we'll probably slip a time or two anyhow. And then you would bring that foil under heavy finger pressure. Don't tear it, and kind of mold it. And I'll do it, then stop so you can see, and mold it so that we have it molded to the labial portion of the die. Now, if you notice that this means you're going to have some excess, and uh, I want to stop and just show you one little thing here to make sure that your piece of foil, I'm going to lay that there. Now, if you will look closely here, this is a piece of foil that uh, was not big enough. And uh, this means that if you come out with this so the foil doesn't match, why well, you've cut your foil too small or the die is too big. The three-quarter piece, inch piece we're talking about is an average piece, and that suffices for this die. If you get a larger die, of course, you're going to have to increase it. If you get a smaller die, you can decrease it. So we'll set that back now and pick up our other die. And, uh, and when you do this, try and bring your lingual portion so that you're about equidistant. In other words, don't let the seam that we're going to form come too far off center. And we would then adapt that under finger pressure, and you should be something like this now, with a couple little wings, and notice that it does come together. Now, if you notice in this area, we've got too much excess, so this would make a big hump, and it would create a problem for us. So now, holding it tightly on the labial, we open that up in this manner, and we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut a little wedge out of here. And I'm going to try and study my hands here so we don't miss too much. And you go in toward about a 45 degree angle 
uh, to the corner, then you come over and you cut a piece out in that manner. Can we pick that up so they could see that now? And we do that on each side. So we, in essence, cut a wedge out of the out of the foil. And I'll do the same thing on the other side now. And you have to look at the die when you do it, because if you don't, you'll miss it, and then you'll be too short. Okay, I'm going to take that out. Now that's too tight. You don't want to tear it. If you tear it, well, then the foil may tear, so I'll have to go back. Okay, now you also notice that this is too long, so we're cut about a third off from that. And now, back with finger pressure again, we're going to adapt the foil. And the first thing we do is, is go ahead and take this little part over the incisal. Take that in the incisal. Now you notice I bent the corner in, and you're going to do the same thing because it's very easy to do. And what we'd like to do then is keep that out, and now we're going to pull this around toward the lingo, and I'll try and stop here every couple seconds and show you the stage that we're at. Okay, now we have uh, these wings out from the lingo portion. Now that gives us a handle to go into, and we hold it now from the lingo, and we take our number seven spatula, see there, we go back on the screen, and now we're going to burnish this down towards the margin. Now don't tear the foil. Uh, you're lucky to be working with tin foil because it's a little easier. As you work with platinum foil, it becomes work hardened and it tears much easier. So you notice now a pretty good definition of the margin down there. Okay. Now we come to the tricky part, the part that I think most of us have the most trouble with. We do have an excess, and we want to form a joint now between the two parts of the foil called a tinner's joint. In other words, we want to fold it over, then fold it again. And I think I have one I did partially, and I hope maybe you'll be able to to uh, see uh, the tinner's joint here. If not, why well, we'll have to demonstrate it uh, to you. If we can get real close in now on this thing. And I'm gonna point. I don't know whether we can pick that up or not. It's pretty tight, but anyhow, right in here we have kind of a double fold. And that's a tinner's joint, so that actually it won't pull apart. Now, yeah, you can see it quite well. I think that shows them what we want. Now, in order to accomplish that, we go back to our other die. We have to get rid of some of this excess uh, that we have here. And uh, so we're going to cut it, but leave it, oh, I'd say three millimeters long, because if you get too tight, uh, so, so now see, I just trim that off. And now we'd go back, and we separate that just a little bit. And we're going to cut about a half a millimeter off of this side. Now, I have to study my hand here again so I don't. Okay, so now in essence we have two pieces of uh, foil coming together. One is a little longer than the other. And I don't know whether we can pick that up or not. Can we pick? Yes, that's, oh, that's excellent, see? One is a little longer than the other. Now what I want to do is take and fold the longer piece over the other and then fold them both over, and that gives us our tinner's joint. And I'll do that now. And this is an important step, otherwise the matrix doesn't maintain its size. And I don't know whether we can pick this up or not, but we'll try. Uh, see, you just fold that half a millimeter over. That manner. Now that's locked together. Now we would now fold the whole thing over. And now we'll go back and reburnish. We burnish it, and now that's actually locked together. Okay. Now, did everybody get that idea? What we have, in essence, is we have two pieces of foil that come together, and we go in and we cut one off so it's a little shorter, then we fold that over once, and then we fold them together. That's called a tinner's joint. And that's important, because if we don't get the tinner's joint, every time you take the matrix on and off from the die, why it's going to it's going to spread and come loose so it has to be locked together and uh, these are things i'm sure we we'll have to demonstrate somewhat to you individually but if you get the idea of that why then we're fine now we're going to go in and we're going to burnish and again the object of course is to burnish everything so you have a very intimate contact 
with with the uh, dye. And you notice we usually burnish towards the shoulder because there's a certain amount of stretch to the material and we want to get rid of it. Now you'll notice on the corners here it's a little rough. And we want to get rid of that roughness because if we leave that rough, when you get ready to remove the matrix from the porcelain jacket, why that sticks to it and then that becomes a problem again, that last little bit of foil out and that is a real problem. So we're going now and we're burnish this part down. And uh, so we caught a little bit there. And we just keep burnish it until we get it quite smooth. Now again, you'll find that it burnishes very nicely. And we'll get it just as smooth as we can. But notice that we're burnishing all the time towards the shoulder because that's where we want to pick up all the slack. We want it to fit very, very intimately to the die. Okay, now that's not bad. See, we've gotten rid of our roughness. Okay. Now the next thing we have to do, if we turn the die upside down, you'll notice that you've got foil that's going around the base or maybe into undercut areas. Now you remember we talked about an axial apron slam. And you can see very well here how this comes out in this direction, see? In other words, we don't cut off into an undercut. And because of that, I know now when I unlock the undercut that we intentionally did to help us hold the foil in place, that I'll be able to remove that. See, now we can take now and, and uh, remove the platinum matrix from the die. Okay, I'm going to lay that just a minute. I want to point out something, but you'll notice we have a great deal of excess now. We can just, right there, that shows what we want to show. So we're going to take the scissors now, we're going to trim and leave a millimeter or so below the shoulder. And the reason we do that is because if we have to go back every time, we may distort the platinum and taking it off. This is a little tricky to handle here because I don't want to squeeze the tin foil together, and that does happen when it's soft. The platinum is less problem that way because as you, as you work with it, or you work hard in it, and then it's much more stiff. And we're going to put our die back on. And now we go back and once more readapt the material to the shoulder. Now you notice this is not a sharp edge instrument. If you go in with a real sharp edge, why well you may end up perforating your material. And if you perforate it, sometimes that creates a real problem for you. If it's a tiny perforation, we don't have to worry about it. But if it's anything more than a very small pinpoint, of course we have to Okay, now this would be our finished burnished uh, platinum or tin foil matrix. And you can see you have good adaptation. However, just to ensure ourselves that we get even better adaptation, we do have a method of, of swedging that we can really adapt the matrix even more intimately. And although I can't demonstrate it, I'll show you how we go about it here, but I don't have any method of really doing it, but we can go do everything but the swedging. Now, uh, this is a, a swedger. It's merely a, a metal cylinder that's filled with clay. And this comes apart, and you have clay in the inside so that under pressure, of course, that exerts great pressure. Then if we use some material like saran wrap, and this is a little large piece, but it really doesn't make any difference, and cover that up because we don't want any clay to get inside. So then we have this situation. In other words, we have this wrapped in the saran wrap. We would then go and put it into the swedger, push it in that manner, then put the other part of the swedger over it, then go to a swedging block or a cement block, something where you wouldn't damage a countertop because you want to bang this two or three times quite firmly. And then you take it out and it's swedged and it's very intimately contacted. Now the reason we're not doing that with you is because when you get it that way, then it becomes impossible for you to get it off uh, with tin foil. With platinum foil, we can attach wax and then hold the platinum in the flame and melt the wax. But this, then, is one that has been swedged, and I'd like you just to get a close-up so you can see how intimately we really uh, contact that uh, thing. See, it just fits the die. It fits it so well that the little pits, the little flaws in plating show up. But you notice how extra smooth that is. Now, the smoother, the smoother the matrix, 
and the better it's adapted to the shoulder, or the better your result's going to be. So you come out with a much better uh, porcelain jacket. I brought along a couple here that we happen to have. One's a jacket, and one is a one is a ceramco or porcelain fused to gold. And I'm going to just let you see that. And I, I would imagine if you just looked, you'd have a great deal of difficulty telling me which one's which. And yet the method of construction, of course, is quite different. So here we have a porcelain jacket on one side and a porcelain fused to gold on the other. And then if we open it up, of course, then we can see that we do have, have a gold uh, portion showing. However, if you look closely at the margins under this high magnification, you'll notice that the margins are very comparable. So the excuse that sometimes is said, well, the margin's poor because it's a porcelain jacket, is really not very acceptable because under this magnification, these are done by the same technician. Well, you see his margins are quite acceptable. The shade is almost identical. So you can see that there is, uh, with a little careful technique, you can come out with an excellent restoration. And what we would like you to do now is go to the laboratory, and under our guidance and our help, we'll help you to uh, form the uh, platinum matrix on your die. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.